Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I added this smoke just to elevate the level of the image. It was looking really good when I retouched it, but I just thought it was lacking something and adding that smoke just brought everything to life. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I did that. But then again, I'm going to go into the layers and show you everything I did to the raw file and then how I added my retouching layers, every single thing I did to the image to get it to the way I wanted it to look. Let me dive right in and then show you guys how we're going to go about this so i just went on google and then downloaded this random image and what i want to use is this fiery part of the cigar and then my next image is a random smoke as well that i also downloaded from google so if you go into google you can find these but the most important thing i want you guys to note is the black background i intentionally selected this image with a black background just so it would be easier for me to get rid of the black background because if you look at this image if you say you want to use a pen to wear a magic wand it will be quite difficult to select that but once it's on a black background we can easily remove that i'll show you that inside of photoshop so right here is the image that i have retouched i'm going to go through the layers and show you exactly what i did to get it to this point all right so now that we have the image inside photoshop i'm going to hide all of these adjustments i've made and then we'll start off with our base layer this is the raw image i have imported from bridge straight into photoshop and i have added a liquify adjustment and what this is doing is just straightening the bottom part of our cigar so if i do it before and after you see because the diy cigar um, it wasn't looking perfect but i've been able to straighten that in photoshop also there's no branding on it but that's fine and then also at the bottom part here the dress was creating these folds that naturally are not supposed to be there so i use the liquify tool to just straighten that you can see that even though i'm using the liquify i'm not really distorting anything about here i'm just fixing the things that shouldn't have been on here i'm just trying to keep the image looking as natural as possible then again i went into the hair as well and then made the hair a little bit bigger or fuller and then i went on to my healing so in the healing here what i did was i made sure i removed blemishes and all the things that were distracting the hairline as well i just removed it with the healing brush tool and if i come down here as well it's the same thing pardon me if i come down here you see it's the same thing if i do it before and after i just remove things that i know are temporary like those marks scars and those things then when i went on to her lips and then over here you can see that there's a little bit of um this coloring and this is because when the makeup artist did the makeup i mean this was i think the second look so if you haven't seen the behind the scenes i recommend you watch the behind the scenes of this shoot so this was like the second outfit that she was wearing so it's only normal that this is going to happen but i reduced the texture on her lips and then i also just like you know like smoothing out some of the textures around um, the lips as well so the next thing i did was to move into frequency separation and inside frequency separation i just smoothing out the skin tones a little bit and then i set the opacity to 69 percent just so it's not too visible because i didn't want adjustments to be concentrated on frequency separation the next thing i did was to go to dodge and burn and this is where i added more depth and drama to the image you can see in the hair for example i painted the highlights made them lighter painted the shadows, made them darker, and then also did the same thing on her body, her face, and then just added an overall contrast um, to the image. The next thing I did was to go into the hair and then I fixed the edges a little bit, but it wasn't too much of my concern because I mean, no one is really going to zoom in that much. So I just fixed it a little bit, brought it down, uh, because I got rid of that line, I just needed to bring the hairline down a little bit. So the next thing I did was to just fix some tonal variations and that I just created a blank layer, set it to color and then sample the colors I liked and then just paint over um, the parts that I wanted to correct. Then I have a lips folder here where if I just move on to her lips, you'd see that I was able to now um, get the colors to look a little bit more even. And then also I removed um, some extra textures as well as just fixed the overall color and then shape with liquify. All right, so now inside my color grading folder, this is where the whole image came to a place that I really like. You know, the hair is golden. There's this gold light in the background. Her skin is glowing. So I just wanted to, you know, just add that to the color scheme that I was playing with. So if I go and open my color grading uh, folder and hide all the layers, we'll start one by one. So the first thing I did was just to add an overall curves. 
if I double click on that you see that I just move the highlights up a little bit and also move the shadows in and that is what created this contrast so that was my first thing that I did the next thing I did was to add my um, skin tone lights and so you'd see that I when I click on it you can see that I've selected fire gold so if you don't have access to these skin tone lights I have a link in my description just click on it to purchase the skin tone LUT and uh, that's what I used to get this golden tone in there the one I'm using in particular is fire gold um, if I go to fade punch uh, this is the vibe it's going to give me a more desaturated uh, like you know color gray with some hints of blue in there if I go to flowzilla um, which is my absolute favorite in this case it's not working because of all the colors present in the image but then in my mind I knew that fire gold was going to give me the glow and the warmth that I was looking for in my images the next thing I did again was to now put in a little bit of fade in the shadow so if I go to the curves of this particular layer you'd see that I went into the blues and then I lifted the shadows a little bit so if I just pull that down you can see the output is set to 2 if I pull it down you can see that warmth comes back but when I move it up so let me just do undo you can see that the output is set to 6 and that's just you know softening the shadows and adding blues in there so that's all I did inside that layer and then I added a color balance just so I can darken um, the tones in here a little bit so what I did was in the mid tones I added some red I added my I added some magenta I added some blues um, into the mid tones then when I go into the shadows I added blues again into the shadows I added magenta and then I also added some cyan if I come into the highlights I again added some warmth so in the yellows I added a lot of yellow and then I added some greens in there and then in the reds I also added red and then combining all those this is the color grade that it gave me if I didn't add this color balance it still is an amazing image you can keep it that way but in my mind because of the warmth i was adding i just wanted to complement it by adding the cooler tones in the shadows just to create color contrast which is also going to help with the three-dimensional look in the image so the last thing i did was to just add this noise layer because i wanted the image to have like a noisy vibe you know so i just run a noise action and then it just added this noise to the image and this image already looks so good this is an amazing image you can end it right here but whilst i was looking at it i knew it was lacking something i just wanted to add an extra element just to bring this image to life so we're going to be adding smoke to it as you saw in the intro part of this video but before i move on i want to just move these uh imported images onto the canvas that we are working on so right here i'm just going to right click and then go on to duplicate and i'm going to duplicate this onto my psd layer and press ok i'm also going to do the same thing to the smoke i'm going to right click and then go on to duplicate and then also move that onto my psd layer so i'm going to press ok right there so if i go into my psd you'd see that we have these in the corner right here and they look very small we'll enlarge it and then we'll work on it so i want to first of all hide the top one so this is my cigar so i'm going to rename this to um actually let me just name it fire and then i'm going to rename the other layer which is the smoke obviously smoke all right so what i'm going to do now is first of all play with uh the fire part of uh, image obviously i want to turn on this big cigar that we have right so i also want to make sure that the noise layer is like my final layer my last layer so i'm just going to make sure i move that to the top and then i'm going to now just move this fire right command t make it a little bit bigger and then bring it down to where our cigar is right now you notice that it's covering our cigar we don't see exactly what is happening so what i want to do is just zoom in a little bit and with my lasso tool i'm just going to draw around the part i need i don't care if i go beyond the border because i'm going to feather this into a cigar right so now that i've drawn around the fire part of the cigar i'm just going to click on the layer mask icon and it's going to get rid of all the parts that i don't want 
I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool. And now what I want to do is make sure I'm using a very soft brush. So this is where if you have a Wacom tablet, it's going to be really important. Like this is the pen and I have the tablet down here. So this is what I've always been talking about. It gives you that drawing or pencil and paper feel. So you have more control over these things. You can't use a mouse. I mean, you can use a mouse, but if you have a Wacom tablet, trust me, it's going to be a lot easier doing this. So what I want to do now is if you notice what we did, we inverted our layer mask. So everywhere that is black is hidden and everywhere that is white is showing. To prove that with my brush tool, I'm just going to make my flow 100%. And now when I start painting with white, you can see that our background is beginning to show, right? The whole cigar is beginning to show. So let me just undo that. And rather, instead of painting with white, I'm gonna paint with black. That is also going to make me hide more of these areas that are currently showing. But currently the flow is too high. So I'm just going to reduce the flow maybe to about 15% and then just make sure that I paint it out like that. Then I'm going to resize the fire till I get it exactly where i want it so i'm just moving it around i think somewhere around here looks good and i'll just keep on brushing on the layer mask to get rid of the excess that i don't need so just painting around here so if i zoom out and do it before and after you can see we've been able to you know light up this cigar which is looking really really good what i'll do next is just adjust opacity a little bit and then we'll come back and fine tune it if we need to. But right now I just want to include the smoke and see or figure out exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to click on my smoke layer and make it visible and hit command T to make it a little bit bigger and just press enter. So what I want to do to quickly remove the black background instead of what we did to the fire, we are just going to move it from normal to screen. And you can see that even though we have like the smoke on the black background because it's not a perfect black we still have this showing but there's a simple way to get rid of it just hit command or control l to bring up your levels and what you can do is inside the midtones you can move it around so you see when i move it to the right we're getting rid of more um, of that background that came with the smoke i can also increase my highlights a little bit and then just make the blacks a lot darker and that is just going to make it disappear so now we can see that we have been able to easily remove um, this black background from our smoke now what i want to do is maybe just play around with where i want the smoke to be coming from i think this looks quite good but i think the part that is coming to the bottom is not looking too realistic so um maybe just move it up like that Okay, now I think we need a source. If, it's, if she's still blowing out of her mouth, I think we should rather let a thicker part um, come through her mouth. So maybe something like this. Yeah, I think this looks good. But currently, the opacity is also too high. So I'm just going to move that and play with that a little bit so i'm going to play with the adjustments and figure out how i want it to look okay so i'm still trying to figure out like exactly where i want this to be maybe just move it up i'm using my arrow keys just to reposition the smoke in her mouth a little bit all right so what i've also done or what i've gone ahead to do as well is set the fill to 82 percent and then i also reduce the opacity of the fire to about 45 uh, percent and I think here just made everything blend in so the last thing I want to do is just create a blank layer on top of all these and hit B for my brush tool set it to black and white and make sure I have white as my foreground I'm going to select a very soft round brush and then with a very low flow I'm just gonna click once actually just make it a little bit bigger where the cigar is coming from and tap once, twice, three times. So what this is doing is it's just adding a little bit of glow just around her mouth and it's making it look a little bit hazy. I'm also going to do the same thing around where the fire is, but instead of using a white brush, I'm going to be using a little bit of a colored 
brush and I'm going to select the color from the file that is here. So I'm going to hit one, two, three. And that's because it's technically going to glow a little bit and I want to make it a little bit believable so you can see that we've added just that a little bit of glow over there. All right, so what I want to do now is just go around and finalize some of these things. So what I'll do is I'll just click on my smoke layer and add a layer mask to that because I want to feather or like reduce um, how solid some of the smoke that is going up is looking. So I'm still with a very low flow and my brush set to black, I'm just going to be painting over the smoke on top like that, just randomly reducing its intensity so it looks a little bit more uh, random and believable. All right, let me actually just feather the top a little bit more. Yeah, I think now this just gets it there. So this is without the layer mask adjustment. You can see it's too in your face, looks too fake, looks too thick, but now we've been able to reduce it and it looks a little bit more believable. Maybe I went a little bit too far down here. So what I rather want to do is I want to duplicate the entire smoke layer. So hit Command J and you can see that it's thickened it one more time. But what I want to do now is just make sure that I am getting rid of a lot of the smoke at the top, right? Because I want it to be more visible. So I'm painting with black and I'm just getting rid of it right here. I want the smoke that is coming out of her mouth to be thicker than what's um, going up. All right, so I'm just playing around and just trying to find like a balance, you know, just to make it look a little bit believable. All right, so what I'll do now is just look for where I put the white glow and then make my brush smaller again. And then this time just paint a concentrated amount of glow just in here like that. Okay, actually, let me just go to where her teeth is and just try and fill it because I want it to look like there's a lot of smoke coming out of her mouth right at this point. Okay, that's a little bit too much. So you can see we're playing around with this. We haven't figured this out yet. We're just trying to, you know, fake this and then just make it look as believable as possible. I still think it's a little bit too strong. So before, after, I'll just tone down the opacity a little bit, somewhere like so. Now that I zoomed in, I noticed the edges here are also looking a little bit too harsh. So what I'll do is I'll just go on to um the the lower smoke layer and i'll go to filter move on to blur and then i'll come down to gaussian blur and that's because i just want to blur it a little bit just to make the whole thing a little bit soft all right i think adding 4.6 just does the trick so i'm going to zoom out a little bit and now you can see we've been able to add smoke to the image and it looks really nice. If I group all of these, shift command G and call this smoke. And then do before and after. You can see that if I hadn't added this, it wouldn't have added that extra effect. The image itself on its own is a very good image. I really, really loved it, but we couldn't light the cigar on set because we didn't want her to inhale the smoke, especially because this is a DIY cigar. You can see it's not even branded. There's no tag on it, but you know, we're just having fun with this image and we've been able to create this interesting looking image. So that's it for today's video guys. I hope you had fun watching me run through the layers, showing you everything that I did from beginning to end. And then where we added a little twist by introducing this fire, lighting up our fake cigar, and then also adding smoke for it to look like she was actually smoking this cigar, even though it's not branded. I hope you found this video to be very interesting. Thank you guys for spending time with me today. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember, don't ever give up.